Two of Swords Reversed The Two of Swords Reversed is a card about partnership and balance. It may be that the time has finally come where you are truly ready to open yourself up to a deep, meaningful partnership, and this can be on a personal or professional level. However, you will need to keep an eye on the other aspects of your life, all business, all love, etc., makes for an imbalanced and thus eventually problematic life. General in general the reversed two of swords tells us that your partnerships are likely to deepen and become more important in your life, and this refers to partnerships of all kinds. However, beware putting too much emphasis on any one partnership. You have several that need to be priorities in your life. Work it is important that you allow yourself to be open to others at work when the reversed two of swords appears. Even though you may be sure that your ideas are the best ones, over time you may find that there is reason and good outcomes because of the plans and ideas of others. This is a time to be seen as a team player. They are not all out to get you, no matter what it may look like on the surface. Love. The reversed Two of Swords says that this is a time to be cautious and deliberate when it comes to love relationships. You may be tempted to push to move things forward, but this is not the time. If you are looking for love, by all means get out and mingle, and you may well meet a likely contender, but it will be some time before a love relationship with them develops. Be patient. And then be more patient. Finances, in terms of finances, the reversed two of swords shows that things are not clear. Even trusted advisors may be mistaken about the best financial moves to make now. Take your time, and be suspicious of any new financial schemes. Keep your money safe, and triple check any documents that must be filed now. Health. When this card appears in the context of health questions, it signifies that any health changes are likely to take place slowly. And this may be for the best, regardless of how fast you'd like things to move. For example, losing too much weight too quickly can cause gallbladder issues for some people. Take things one day at a time and note small changes. You are likely to feel better and more healthy, just not overnight. Spirituality When the reversed Two of Swords appears in relation to questions regarding spirituality, it is easy to get carried away with spiritual ideas that appear to work for others, but which may not work for you. Be skeptical and cautious. There may be some misguided people who try to bring you into their fold now. You don't have to allow this. Be your own person. Tarot History The history of the tarot is shrouded in mystery. Very little in the way of concrete information is known about its origin although many things have been written about it. We will probably never know the truth as fact and fiction seem to be irrevocably mixed nowadays. The tarot originated in northern Italy in the early 15th century, sometime between 1420 to 1440. Despite the fact that it is often attributed to originating from China, Egypt, India, or Morocco to name just a few there is absolutely no evidence that this is the case. Nor, as is often quoted, is there any evidence whatsoever that the tarot was brought to Europe by the Romanis? The name tarot is often attributed to being Egyptian, Hebrew, or Latin. This is not the case. The earliest names are all Italian in origin. The cards were originally called Carte de Triumphi. Around 1530 the word Taraki began to be used to differentiate them from a new game of triumphs that was in vogue at the time. The etymology of this new word is unknown. The German variant was known as Tarak and the French Tarot. 
The symbolism for the tarot is drawn from the culture of medieval and Renaissance Europe. The tarot subjects are distinctive to European Christendom. The symbolism does not come from Egypt or any of the other exotic locales often mentioned. It is often stated that modern-day playing cards evolved from the tarot. This is not the case. Modern-day playing cards came to Europe courtesy of Islam. They were an adaptation of the Islamic Mamluk cards. They appeared quite suddenly in many different European cities between 1375 and 1378. These early cards had suits of cups, swords, coins, and polo sticks, and courts consisting of a king and two male underlings. The tarot adds the fool, the trumps, and a set of queens to this system. Sometime before 1480, the French introduced cards with the now familiar suits of hearts, clubs, spades, and diamonds. The Joker is not original to either the early form of modern day cards, or to the tarot, but instead originated in the USA around 1857 and was used as a wild card in poker as well as the highest trump in euchre. It is also often stated that the Catholic and Protestant churches outlawed the tarot and all who used it in an effort to stamp out so-called heretical teachings. This is not the case. The Inquisition documented what the Church considered as evidence of heresy in great detail. The tarot was not even mentioned. After the Reformation less controversial images for the Pope and Papess were substituted by card makers as the Church had objected to the original images. It is often said that the tarot was not used as a divination tool prior to 1781. The tarot was used as early as the 16th century to compose poems describing personality characteristics. There is historical evidence that in one case at least these verses were presented as relating to the person's fate. In other words divination. Divinatory meanings were assigned to the tarot in Bologna in the early 1700s and this is the first unambiguous evidence of tarot divination. Ordinary playing cards were connected with divination as early as 1487. It is not unreasonable to think that the tarot was also. The tarot has often been attributed with being a pillar of Western esoterica occultism. This is certainly not the case. The first occult writers to discuss the tarot were Court de Gabellin and the Comte de Mellet in 1781. The tarot was not mentioned in any occult work for the first 350 years of its existence. The terms Major Arcana, Minor Arcana, High Priestess, and Hierophant are anachronistic when referring to the older tarot decks. The historically appropriate terms are the Trumps and the Fool, the Suit Cards, Popes or Popes, and Pope. Likewise pentacles and wands are relatively recent substitutions for the traditional suit names of coins and staves or batons. The original Italian titles of the cards were in some cases different from the later French titles that have become familiar to us through the Tarot de Marseille and its descendants. Also, the ordering of the trumps varied considerably in Italy where the cards originated it is not known which ordering is the earliest one. Even the number of cards in the deck varied a great deal. So care should be used in making statements about the original meaning of the cards based on the familiar titles and ordering. Many believe that the Waitsmith Tarot is the original, standard, or most authentic tarot deck in existence. This is absolutely untrue. The Waitsmith slash Rider Waite deck was created in 1909, not even 100 years ago making it a relative newcomer in the almost 600 year history of the tarot. There is actually no definitive version of the tarot.